Welcome, everyone. This is Mark Steiner here for The Real News, and we're talking with Margaret Prescott, whose show, Center and Truth, appears on Pacifica. She went to uh, Haiti for The Real News and joins us now. We're going to continue our conversation with her. And, Margaret, uh, let, let me um, just begin uh, by showing this video of you walking into this home uh, oh. where, it, it, where they found a skeleton of a woman who's burned alive. If we weren't here and somebody was just telling us about it, just very, very difficult to believe. We are about to enter the home. The smell and some of the bones of this woman are still here. So they are warning us to be careful and it may be difficult indeed. And there is a skeleton. Oh, this is the skeleton of a woman who was pregnant and burned to death. And here she is, and they are keeping her to hopefully get the word out to the world that something has got to be done. The people in La Saline must not be left alone. They must know that people are with them who care and who could stop these atrocities. Margaret, I, mean, I, I can hear from your own voice in this video and what you saw that, that this is just, it was, it was just almost too difficult to watch. But I think it was important to be seen to show the, the kind of level uh, of violence taking place against the Haitian people. And this is a pregnant woman burned alive in her home. Um, and the smell was still there, uh, Mark. Could you, could you imagine that? So we not only had to enter a, a, a space that in many ways was a sacred space because this was a, a skeleton of a woman there, but still the smell of her death in the room and some of her bones were... Uh, scattered. A lot of it was together, but some of it was scattered in other places. You could see the burn marks on some of the bones. I mean, I have never in my life had to experience, you know, to witness something like that. And the residents of La Celine, they really wanted us to see that. They want the world to see it. And they were saying, what can you do to get this message out? And that's why, Mark, what you're doing and what The Real News is doing is so important. I think this is the first uh, video footage, actually, uh, likely to be seen of, of what happened in La Celine. Uh, but it was quite a moment, as you could well imagine, just just devastating, just heartbreaking. So as we're talking together, we're also going to show uh, our, our viewers this photo of a man, it's a nude photo of a man who was killed and later cut up uh, by the Haitians, and this, I, I, by the Haitian police. So let, let me, let, as we're looking at this, uh, Margaret, and it, these are not easy things to look at or watch, but let's just talk about what again politically what's behind this and why this is happening we saw that in less in the last few weeks that five mercenaries uh were arrested in haiti americans uh former seals some of them one a serbian and then sent back to the united states saying they were there to protect uh things in haiti they weren't there to kill people but the weapons they took were these with these with major assault weapons um and 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 what, is there a connection here what it politically is happening why there are mercenaries in Haiti, why these scenes of horrendous violence are taking place against the Haitian people. What is underneath of this? Yes, and if, if you see and if your viewers see some of the, the bullet holes, you'll see that these were major weapons uh, that were used. This isn't just some small uh, caliber uh, bullet for the, for the most part, right? And when... Uh, on the ground in Haiti, we saw teams of mercenaries. I can't tell you. I mean, you know, it seemed as though every time we paused to sit down somewhere to grab a, a cup of coffee or something to eat, here came a group of people, uh, a num men, Americans uh, speaking English, perhaps with someone who looked like maybe they were Jordanian or, or Latinx uh, in the mix. And the energy and the vibe you got, definitely, these are teams of mercenaries. And as you know, the United Nations that had occupied uh, Haiti for quite some time, they are in the process of withdrawing, right? And it seems to me, anyway, uh, our thought and, and of our entire team, that these teams of mercenaries are basically replacing 
the UN troops. And we know, we heard of, of people being killed by expert sniper fire. You need training to be able to, to do something like that. We also know that the Martine uh, Moise, who is the first lady of Haiti, a few days before the November massacre began, she went to La Celine with a lot of money, giving out money to the people. She met with a, a community leader in La Celine, and the deal was they wanted the protest to stop and for the people of La Celine to support her husband and her husband's party. Of course, the people took the money, but then they and the leader, the community-based leader, made it clear that they would never support uh, the government of her husband, that it was corrupt, right? And that they were demanding accountability. What happened is that that community leader was arrested. He's still in prison. Uh, the people of La Saline are demanding his release. But then what they say is that that visit from the first lady was the trigger that began these massacres. Now, some of even public radio in the United States and mainstream media, they're reporting that what's going on in La Saline is a conflict between two gangs. Things. Right. That right. is not the case. All right. Because um, what the people, they name names of people in government and they have made it clear that when uh, these paramilitary people come in to torture and kill, that they are led in by Boyd. Boyd are like the special Haitian police forces, specially trained uh, by the UN, by the United States, likely by some of these very mercenaries that are in the country. How is that possible? And people, so many people have had to flee uh, La Saline. One other quick point I should make also is that um, there were a few apartment type buildings that were built for the people during the Aristide um, era. And because a lot of people there basically live in shacks. Now, those homes were also targeted. They were some of the first to be targeted. And people who live in those homes had to flee. And they went to another place uh, near the water. And they were sleeping on the concrete floor, on on pieces of cardboard. We interviewed a, a young mother there who had given birth in this place that they fled to. And honestly, looking at her child, we knew she had no medical care. She had very little food. And we, uh, we don't have much hope that that child likely lived. But these are the conditions. Uh, and, and, and people are very, very angry about it. And they know that government forces are behind it. And they know why. Uh, nevertheless, as you could see from the video, they were ready to speak out about what is happening and who they think is responsible uh, for this. So very quickly, Mark, we, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, just, just to conclude, I, I want to talk just very quickly about uh, what you think has to happen from this end. Uh, what are the measures we can take yes. in this country to, to let people know, but also what this country has to do to not allow this to happen? That's right. And I, I think uh, it's very important for a delegation to get down there, perhaps the Congressional Black Caucus leading a delegation to go as soon as possible, be on the ground in Haiti, not only to meet with the present government, which we understand they likely will have to do, but also to meet with the, the people who survive La Saline, to meet with the leadership of Lavalas. The people in La Saline, by the way, made it very, very clear that if President Aristide or Lavalas was there, this would not be happening. And that's another reason uh, that they're going after uh, La Saline, because it is a stronghold of uh, the party of President Aristide as well. So that urgently needs to happen. Uh, uh, and and more media uh, going down there, perhaps another uh, round from Real News, Pacifica, et cetera, going down there, getting the update as to what is happening and documenting all of this uh, because the people of La Saline say this has got to stop. And they made an appeal actually to the Congressional Black Caucus in the United States to say, please help us, please do something to stop these massacres. Michael Prescott, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for going to Haiti for the Real News and Pacifica to get this story to us. Uh, the entire video will be shown uh, when it's finished editing. Um, and uh, we look forward to your thoughts on this. And Margaret, thanks so much for joining us here in the Real News. Thank you so very much, Mark. And I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News Network.
Thanks for joining us. Take care.